Coming up on Bloom, why what you eat and how you sleep plays a big role in living your best life. So in order to become a better person, we have to up level. So that's why I love this catchy little phrase, better up. Yeah. Kind of like leveling up, but better up. Plus how learning to listen can strengthen your relationships and how trying new things can get you out of your day-to-day -day rut. We'll have seven ways to become a better person as Bloom presented by Lifeguard Imaging starts now. Gail Guardo, welcome to Bloom presented by Lifeguard Imaging, a full hour dedicated to your health and wellness. So get ready to bloom. Today we're exploring seven ways to be a better person. This of course will vary from person to person, but today we have top experts in with advice to elevate your life. And what many people don't realize is that our nutrition and sleep are directly linked to our mood and drives us to make changes in our life. Because let's face it, not all days are rainbows and unicorns. Maybe you're not meeting your goals. Maybe your work-life balance is way off or maybe it's just the change of seasons. The only way to get unstuck is to take action. And we start with the basics, changes you can implement now to become a better person. Joining us now is double certified nutritionist and functional fitness trainer, Martha Van Camp. My friend, it is always so great always to see you. Always good to be here. I love this, because a lot of times when you think of being a better person, you think of maybe I should volunteer more, right. maybe I should do this more, but when it comes to living your best life, it really does start with what we eat, how we sleep, right. because that, it, right there, that just impacts our mood. Right, and it's so easy, I think, for all of us to blame, oh, she was in a bad mood, so now I'm in a bad mood, or she was not so nice to me at work, so then I lashed out at her. <laughs> and when we all want to become a better person, a more whole person inside, you have to step back and realize everything is not under our control, but there are some foundational pieces that are certainly under our control. So in order to become a better person, we have to up level. So that's why I love this catchy little phrase, better up. Yeah. Kind of like leveling up, but better up. Because, yeah, I was just gonna say, right. I've heard the song, level up, level up, right, level up, right, but I've never heard right. better up. So no. What, is, what does that mean? <laughs> Although that might be a better song. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For me, it just means, look, I have to turn inward and I have to realize that I am in control of my hormones, my emotions and my day. I can't rely on outside factors to really control me. So let's start with within. And for me, there are four foundational pillars when we do go inward that create a solid foundation for us every single day. Making better choices, like behavioral choices. Am I going to eat fast food today? Am I going to move my body? Am I going to get more than five or six hours of sleep? So when we think about what sets us up for success every single day, it's focusing on our behavioral choices. Those are the things that we can control. So let's talk about the things that we can control yep. and how much people probably don't realize to no fault of their own that something as simple as going through a drive through right. grabbing a burger and ba grabbing some fries this is a recipe for disaster, not just for your waistline, no. but it is for just the chemicals in your system and the right. way your, your gut is communicating with your brain and how you feel. Exactly, so the four foundations I mentioned were food, moving your body, making the choice to actually walk for a little bit each day, mm -hmm. sleeping more than five or six hours, plus the self-talk that you do to yourself every Ooh. day, because we have that inner dialogue all I do. day long. So you made a really good point, when we come to this lovely meal for an instant or maybe 20 minutes, it's gonna feel really good. And it could be actually soothing those bad emotions. Maybe someone made you angry at work. Mm -hmm. So you turn to this and suddenly you get that reward center in your brain and you do feel better. But what happens 30 minutes later, you're going to crash hard. And that's where the negative self-talk is going to come in because this is going to trigger the feel-good hormone followed by the not so feel good hormones. And then we're like, shoot, why did I eat that? Why did I do that? And so you start this perpetual negative self-talk. So if you really step back and consider these foundations, it is focusing on whole foods, nutrient dense foods, not this. This is not going to help us in the long run, mood wise or on the belly. It's about 
at, at best case, getting out 10 minutes after every meal and walking fast. Like I tell people, walk like you're, like you're late to mm -hmm. something. Just do it for 10 minutes. Worst case scenario, do it for 20 minutes after dinner if you have the better free time then. Okay. Learn to shut down those devices, get those blackout curtains in your room and really focus on eight hours of sleep. Women need eight or nine hours of sleep a night to function and reboot their hormones. And then also actively work on that negative self-talk. That negative self-talk, 90% of the thoughts we have each day are negative. And we carry 85% of those 90 negative thoughts to the next day. So we're like this horrible recording of negative thoughts. Focus on these four things and you will feel um, like you're becoming a better, more confident person. I like that, I like that. I do wanna give you a little secret that I learned from a book that I'm listening to for the round two now, Untethered Soul. Yeah. When you get those negative thoughts, some advice in the book, it says just start saying, hello. Hello, like stop you're it. You're breaking it. Break it. Yep. Just know that you're doing right. it and break it because it is something that I think, I don't know, I can't speak for men, but I, a lot yeah. of my female friends say, I just get caught yeah. up like a rat on a wheel Absolutely. in my own head. Absolutely. So a, a lot of this, we've got about a minute left, but a yeah. lot of this is just simply, you know, a lot to think about, but just take it one step at a time. Absolutely, and it does seem overwhelming at moments, but you gotta think, okay, how do I eat an elephant, right? We, mm -hmm. I think we probably all told our kids this, like, how do we eat an elephant? You eat it one, one bite, bite at, at a time. time. So here's the thing, focus on the 1% each day and the 2190 rule. So the 1% is what small change can you make today? Maybe it's not drinking regular soda, going to diet soda. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's kicking diet soda and just going to water. Maybe it's limiting the alcohol to like two nights a week versus seven nights a week. Mm -hmm. So what's that 1%? And the 2190 rule is 21 days to make a habit, 90 days to make it a lifestyle. So this is not a sprint. All self-improvement, all better up work that we need to do mm -hmm is for the long haul. It's a marathon. So focus on one tiny thing each day. Martha, this has been awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Absolutely. All right, we're gonna share Martha's story on our website. And when we come back, relationship expert, Dr. Gina Kalura is in with the power of learning to listen. Stick around everyone, Bloom will be right back. You're watching Bloom, presented by Lifeguard Imaging, saving lives through early detection. Call now, 813-582-5222 to schedule your scan today. Do you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS? Call the tax man. Ooh, call the tax man. Call the tax man. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS, call me right now. The IRS is the most relentless collection agency in America. They have the power to legally take everything you own, home, paycheck, autos, any asset you have. So what do you do? Call me now. My team of experts can help you keep your money. We have programs that can significantly reduce or eliminate what you owe, even payment plans that now stretch out for months. We can also stop collection calls, wage garnishments, and remove tax liens. So if you owe the IRS a lot of money and you want to keep it, don't wait. Call the tax man right now. Welcome back to Bloom. We're exploring ways to become a better person today and a powerful tool for building better relationships is learning to listen more and talk less. From building trust to building communication, listening can take you a long way. Joining us now is behavioral scientist and the author of Seven Layers of Successful Relationships, Dr. Gino Coloro. Dr. Gino, it's always so great to see you. Gail, always a pleasure. This one is really great because the art and science of listening with intention yeah. is not easy for a lot of people. No. But it's so important when it comes to relationships. Why? It is vastly important because when we think about right, the idea of having a conversation between two people, right? Mm -hmm. There's one person that is giving and there's one person that is receiving. The question about that is the person who is receiving, what is your intention behind receiving what it is that that person that you're talking to is conversing with you about? If I focus all the time about wanting to impose whatever you give me, I'm going to use against you. I'm going to prove you right or I'm going to judge you about it, right? As opposed to my intention in this conversation is to truly understand where you're coming from. 
why you think the way that you think, why you feel the way that you feel, as, op as opposed to how I feel about the situation and mm -hmm. wanting to impose that on you. So to be able to dial that back a little bit and really pull back this idea of what is my purpose, what is my aim in this conversation right now, because if I want a positive outcome, I shouldn't be judging. I shouldn't be trying to change your mind about something. If it's positive, I want to be able to build and have a robust understanding of where you're coming from. And, and sometimes, you know, people need you to listen because they need to be heard. And I'm yes. just going to go ahead and out myself on this. My oldest daughter and I, we are as thick as thieves. Mm -hmm. We're so incredibly close. I'm close to all of my daughters. But this particular one points out to me that I am absolutely terrible terrible when it comes to just learning to sit in the rabbit hole mm -hmm. and listen because when she comes to me with a problem my first instinct is I'm going to fix it <laughs> like before she even finishes what she says I already have a solution for mm -hmm. the problem and not everyone's looking for you to solve their problems yeah, right. they just want to be heard exactly and that right. that's hard for me I tell her because I'm your mom I want to fix anything that's wrong in your life, but that's not always our place. No, that's exactly right. And nine times out of 10, you're, you just hit the nail on the head. It's not that they're looking for solutions. They just want to be felt. They want to be seen and they want to know that they're not in it alone, right? And so as they make their way through that maze, that is the challenges of relationships, the challenges of trials and tribulations in life, they want to know that they have that support system that I can go and talk to mom anytime and she's going to listen to me and she's going to hear me express what I feel and how I feel. And if I want some sort of a response and I want some sort of solution, I know I can ask her because I know she's going to have an answer. Right. But maybe at that moment in time, it's not what I'm looking for. And, and so you just listen. The tactic is, do you say anything back? Like, how, how do you engage? Because yeah. maybe I'm just asking selfishly for myself, but yeah. how, how do you know that you're, let that person know that you're hearing them yes. without speaking back a lot of words? Absolutely. So simple phrases, right? I hear you. I understand you. If you want to take the conversation a step further, you know where to find me. But if not, I'm going to be here to be a soundboard for you, right? So in that sense, less is more, right? The less words that we utilize in a conversation like that, where the entire intention is to have that other person know that I hear them, I'm listening to them, I'm embodying what they're saying, right? That I don't want to impose any sort of solution. I don't want to impose what my will or opinion is. I just want them to know, regardless, I love you and I'm here. Now we're talking about, you know, relationships with those that we love, but these relationships, they also bleed into, you know, our work environment, mm -hmm. our friends environment, all the same thing. And I think a lot of times people have goals. They have, they have a way that they think it should be done. This is another place where listening can pay off. I mean, big because time. you learn to understand people on every level. Well, a really big thing in this realm, Gail, is anticipation, right? Anytime that we're in a conversation, the, the brain does not like being confused. It wants to make sense of whatever we're talking about, whatever's going on in my environment, right? So when I begin to anticipate because I don't want ambiguity, I begin to set silent expectations. And when you set expectations, you open the door for what? disappointment, right? Which can then sway the emotions of how it is that that interaction and that conversation is going to go. So this ability of let's talk, let's converse, right? And I am not going to impose how it is that I feel or what it is that I think without fully understanding you first. But that requires a level of self mastery and complete understanding of what my blind spots are, right? And what it is that I know gonna compromise my opinion at that point in time because I get passionate and emotional about wanting to share that, right? When that's not the most conducive and productive thing at that moment in time. Yeah, I think that's what you taught mastery and we need a whole show to master that because <laughs> you know, tempering that passion, yes. you know, because a lot of times that passion is coming from a good place. Absolutely. It really is genuinely coming from a good place. Absolutely. But you, there's a timing element of all of this and that, that that's the, you got to give that space. Oh, like a lot of space, by the way, right? Yeah. And, and it, it's not just space for them, it's space for you because we have to step away and say, let me really look at the big picture, not from the thousand foot view, but from the four. 40,000 foot view. What is going to be the most constructive and conducive thing to help this person that I love so much and I have so much positive intention towards? Because I may flood them like a, from drinking from a fire hose with information and all they're looking for is a sip of water right out of my glass, right? They're not ready for all of that, right? So it's very important to temper those emotions, to temper what it is that we want to say and make sure we package it to achieve the ultimate goal is what? Do you completely understand right, where this. I'm coming from? 
Dr. Gino, it's always so great having yes, you on the show. Too. Thank you, you so much. Absolutely. Thank We're going to post Dr. Gino's story on our website. And up next, clinical psychologist Dr. Carlos Garcia shares how the importance of committing to things 100% can help you be a better version of yourself. And later, we're bringing on Dr. Gino and Dr. Garcia together for a deep dive into setting goals and how it can skyrocket personal growth. Bloom will be right back. You're watching Bloom, presented by Lifeguard Imaging, saving lives through early detection. Call now, 813-582-5222 to schedule your scan today. Welcome back to Bloom's Seven Ways to Become a Better Person edition. From building confidence to showing your commitment, getting 100% is a great way to start reaching your goals in life. As we continue with Ways to Become a Better Person here on Bloom, we're joined by clinical psychologist Dr. Carlos Garcia about the importance of committing 100% percent. It is so great to see you. Always a pleasure to be here, Gail. So I love this, this 100% theory, because you know, when you look at relationships, especially you think 50-50, but it's really not a 50-50 deal. You should be coming into everything you do in life, be it a relationship, a project, work, with 100%. 100%, uh, 100% of our energy, 100% of our emotional focus, and 100% of our psychological focus. Um, now, I, I will say th something about this that I tend to share with clients, and that's execute at 80%. What that means is a lot of times we get caught in this analysis by paralysis. Am I ready to take on that goal? Am I ready to commit to that objective? And we spend all of our time thinking about it and not executing. So I think we start off at 80% with the hopes and goals of getting to that 100%, of committing to the goals that we have in a way where every part of us, every fiber of our being, when we, when, from when we wake up in the morning to when we go to sleep at night, we are committed to this objective. From that place, we can accomplish our goals in a much smoother way and usually in a much faster way. And I know you've always been a big proponent as a regular on our show. You know, when you talk to your patients or when you just talk to people and our viewers in general, you know, you're big on, hey, listen, you, 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 you got to give yourself grace in life. So if you're starting new goals and you're starting new commitments at 100 percent, you know, maybe you're not taking on 10 new 100 percent projects. You know, you're starting one at a time and or, or prioritizing who really needs 100% of you? Absolutely, and I think it, it often comes from a place for me, my understanding as a clinical psychologist is why? For me, it's always why. Why are we setting that goal? Why is it important to us? A lot of us are out here setting goals because we constantly feel like we're not enough in the world. And maybe, you know, having that six pack is gonna make me feel better. Or maybe having that bank account is gonna make me feel better. So from that place, I mean, you could put 100% of yourself, but um, what might happen is you might reach that goal and still find yourself feeling a little bit empty because the goal is not rooted in your value system and something that's truly important to you. So what I tell people is that, yeah, absolutely, change is very challenging and change is very difficult. So why don't we get realistic about life and know that anytime we're moving ourselves from a place of comfort, that there's going to be challenges, there's going to be roadblocks. So knowing that ahead of time and making that a part of your plan will help you navigate those challenges better when you get there. Um, what about like just embracing change when you're trying something new or you want to start giving something 100% of, of your energy? Yeah, I, I, I think that it's really important to check in with ourselves, right? Yeah. Where is the motive coming from? Where is the inspiration coming from? Is it a, a, a deeper desire to do something big in the world? Or is it sort of this desire to fulfill some egotistical version of us, right? The six pack, the, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. I just want a healthy body because I want to look good for people. Mm -hmm. I think when we start to show up in the world from a place of wanting to have a greater impact, when we start to show up in the world from the change that I'm making is not about me, the change that I'm making is within me so that I can have a bigger impact on the world and on people out there. That really shifts the way that we show up. It shifts the energy levels that we put into our goals and it allows us to hit that 100% a lot faster because if my change is for people, it's for others, it's mm -hmm. to, to, to create a better world, um, I'm gonna be much more inspired than if it's just for me and feeling empty. And, and, and self-care throughout this 
critically important because when you give a lot, you know, because I, I do like to give to those I love, but sometimes you overextend yourself to a place where you're not even holding the oxygen mask on your face. Yeah, Gail, I grew up um, and, and I feel like my whole life has been, right, how can I give to others? How, how, how do I um, show up for other people? And one of the things that I had to learn to navigate many times in my life and still as a therapist, even some days now, um, is, oh, when I'm not giving to myself, when I'm not filling my cup, when I'm mm -hmm. not taking time to do the things that um, make me feel centered and present, then I can't be there for you. I'm not gonna show up for you in the ways that you need me to show up for you. Um, so self-care is vitally important. How are we filling our own cup? Are we meditating? Are we doing yoga? Are we going to the gym? Are we fueling our mm -hmm. body with the right foods that let us show up with that really good heart space and that great energy to make a bigger impact in the world? Such a pleasure to talk to you as always. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we're going to share this story on our website. And Dr. Garcia is actually going to stick around, and we're bringing Dr. Gino Calora back for an extended conversation about how to set goals and stick with them when Bloom returns. Have you ever felt leg pain, restlessness, cramps, tingling, swelling, numbness, itchiness, or coldness? Then you need the new clinically proven Legsercise Pro, the natural circulation booster that uses continuous automatic leg movement to soothe pain and promote healthy circulation the natural drug-free way. After using Legsercise for a week, I felt like I wanted to go for a walk again without pain like I used to. Legsercise Pro's patented walking simulator propulsion technology moves your feet back and forth along its concave track, creating constant movement and flex at both the knee and ankle joints. It's like having a physical therapist right in your own home. It's helped with the swelling and the pain. The tingling feeling is gone. Call right now and order your very own Legsercise Pro, the clinically proven automatic leg mover that soothes pain and naturally promotes healthy circulation. Call now. Welcome back to Bloom. We've been exploring ways to become a better person. And today we're welcoming back behavioral scientist, Dr. Gino Calora and clinical psychologist, Dr. Carlos Garcia to deep dive into the importance of setting goals for your personal growth. Gentlemen, thanks for sticking around. Absolutely, Gail, always great a pleasure. Here. Yeah, so this is a great subject. We're talking about the importance of goals. And I think for a lot of people, it just kind of gives them a cl clear path to go on. Would you agree? So, you know, it's a really interesting thing and, and, and to kind of <clears throat> take a deep dive at what happens, right, when we start talking about setting goals and mm -hmm. achieving goals, right? So there's this portion of our brain that's called the mesolimbic dopamine center, right? And essentially that is responsible, right? Whenever we achieve something that we've mm -hmm. been working so hard towards, it dumps that dopamine and then serotonin follows behind it and it feels really, really good, right? And so when we think about the importance, the vitality of setting goals in our lives, we want to feel good about ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the key components. I love that, Dr. Gino. Um, I like to always think about it from the place of why am I even setting goals? Mm. Um, usually it's because I find somewhere in my life there's something that needs change. Mm -hmm. And I think that we all sort of view the world from the place from where we live. And so for me, setting goals is all about how do I become a better human? How am I becoming a better person? What am I doing day to day to move a little bit closer to that version of me that I want to show up in the world as? Yeah, and, and I think too, maybe goals go align with you know, what your personality type is. Because my kids jokingly call me, like, they're like, you're not Mel Robbins, mom, okay? And I'm like, I, I like, oh, Alice, we got this. But you know, like everybody doesn't need to come in like a cheerleader. Goals can mean different things to different people and mm -hmm. you can approach them. You, you don't have to be, you know, being a champion every day of your life Definitely goals just to not. get you through life. It's such an important thing too because Gail, on average, right, <clears throat> human beings, we have anywhere between 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts a day, right? Mm -hmm. Of the 12,000 to 60,000, 80% of those thoughts are typically negative, right? And 90% of those thoughts are the same thoughts we had the day before. So what do goals do? They open the possibilities for what could be. It breeds confidence, right? And what is confidence? It's belief in yourself, right? Which when we start talking about self-mastery, right? Being fulfilled, being able to push forward whatever your mission is in life, which very much coincides with what Dr. Carlos said about values and having a strong value system, it helps you actually move the needle and grow in that capacity. And maybe motivates you. And motivate us. Mm -hmm. I think too, where we sometimes get 
a little bit caught up in our motivation to achieve goals is our thinking, mm -hmm. right? We start to overanalyze. We start mm -hmm. to sort of judge ourselves. And one of the things that I'll usually sort of say to a client, I'll ask them, yesterday at 3.30 p.m., what were you doing? What were you doing? What was your life experience? And it's probably different than mine if I asked you that question, and probably mm -hmm. different than Absolutely. Dr. Gino's, and probably different than everybody. What I'm trying to say here is that we are all different individuals. We don't need to hold ourselves to the same standard of where everybody else is, how they're accomplishing those goals, or what rate they're accomplishing those goals at, to remember that we're sort of on our own journey, and if it takes us a little bit longer to get there, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of like when you're playing sports. If you're watching that person and that person, you're not keeping your eye on the ball, exactly. and the ball is really your life and how to propel it forward. That's exactly right. And you know, it's so interesting because when I have the opportunity to work with people, I always give them a challenge. And that challenge is this, write your own personal constitution. Mm -hmm. Put yourself in a room and really define what is it that you stand for? What is it that you believe in? And then when we start talking about goal setting and taking control of your life, what sort of goals can I create that amplify all those values, right? To really give me that strong sense of fulfillment, which runs parallel with being motivated, right? And being happy and being engaged in life. Yeah, yeah, and, and would you agree with that? Absolutely, and I, and, and I would add an additional piece. I think as a clinical psychologist, a lot of my work is focusing on our internal programming. Mm -hmm. You know, what are the stories and narratives that we hold in our lives that sometimes get in the way or block us from achieving those things that we want to achieve? Mm -hmm. So sometimes those goals that we're sort of executing on might very well be, you know, that next job that I want to get or, you know, changing my physique or my diet. But do we ever stop and sort of set goals for ourselves? Like, how do I become a more compassionate human? Yeah. How do I gain more mm -hmm. wisdom? How do I understand my programming and thoughts at a, at a much deeper level? Sometimes we need to go inward and set goals there to better understand ourselves. From that place, then we can navigate the world very differently. The goals that we sort of set for ourselves start to be a little bit bigger and wider and more about the collective than just about us. Yeah, I'm glad you both have had kind of this running theme of the, of the chatter that happens in our head. And unfortunately, that a lot of it is negative and how that, that negative talk, and we've got about a minute left, stands in the way of how we move forward. 100%. You know, one of the big things, Gail, especially when we're talking about the negativity of it, right? So the brain does not like ambiguity. It does not like not knowing. It doesn't like surprises. It doesn't like threats. It's, it's designed to keep us alive and to be able to thrive in our environment. Mm -hmm. So our ability to really churn on our deep, a deeper understanding of, I need to make harder choices every day. And those harder choices can be micro goals. I know we have, we're short on time, so please, Dr. Carlos. No, absolutely. I, I, I love what, what you said there, Dr. Gino. I think it's really, truly about checking in with our hearts, mm -hmm. seeing what it is that we want to strive for, and then setting those small goals every day. Every little movement in that direction is worth something. Gentlemen, this has been so captivating. I, I, I think the world of both of you to have you together on one <laughs> set, it's like a dream come true. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gail. All right, we're going to post this story and discussion on our website. And when we come back, we'll talk more about the power of forgiveness with Pastor Kathy Connor. Boom, we'll be right back. You're watching Bloom, presented by Lifeguard Imaging. We begin where your checkup ends. Call now, 813-582-5222 to schedule your scan today. Welcome back. This next tool for healing, personal growth, and becoming a better version of yourself is not always easy to do, and that's forgiveness. It can take time to work through the hurt and pain caused by someone's actions, but our next guest says it's a powerful tool for healing and improving relationships. Joining us now from First Presbyterian Church is Pastor Kathy Connor. My friend, it is always so great to see you. Thank you so much, Gail. I'm honored to be here. And I love this particular subject about forgiveness because mm -hmm. I don't think people realize how freeing it is yeah. for you on a personal level. Yeah. And you believe that we should fight for our relationships. Absolutely, I think it's critical that we fight for relationship because honestly being right is overrated. Mm -hmm. So when we stay in that space of unforgiveness, we become enslaved to this growing sense of bitterness, anger, resentment. It's literally like taking my hands and mm -hmm. instead of being mad at you and putting them around your neck, I'm putting them around my own. And it severs me and thwarts my relationships with other people, my ability to be healthy and to live a life-giving 
kind of a life. Now, I know that you're coming from this from, you know, I've, I've sat through services at your church mm -hmm. on forgiveness, mm -hmm. but regardless of what your belief system is, this is something that really can break chains off of you in so, on so many levels. A hundred percent. No matter what you believe, Jesus said something really radical about forgiveness. He was asked, should I forgive someone up to seven times? His answer to the question was, forgive 70 times seven. And what he meant by that wasn't an actual mathematical number. Mm -hmm. He meant limitless. Doesn't mean you suddenly trust and your pals again or your close again, but it means as many times as someone needs forgiveness, you give it because we certainly need it as well. And this was very radical thinking because it's so freeing. What Jesus is interested in is what it does to us. What does on. it do to us? Right, so you end up in this awful kind of limited space where your personality can change. Yes. And I, I knew someone who, for whom that happened and uh, they were so angry and understandably so. Their daughter had um, died in, the, in a drug context mm -hmm. and the boyfriend was arrested, sent to jail, and the mother stewed in it. Her anger grew, again, understandable. Her grief was powerful. But family members started saying to her, you're changing, we can't even be around you. Uh, your anger is palpable. And this woman admitted it and realized, I need to do something. So she mm -hmm. started writing letters to the boyfriend mm -hmm. that, that she blamed. Mm -hmm. And he was in prison and just said, look, I, you know, I don't like what's happening to me. I just want to extend to you. He responds with, you know what? I um, never thought that I could deserve any contact with you. Please know I'm so sorry. It's okay if you don't forgive me. And she started writing back words of forgiveness. And back and forth it went until a relationship formed, mm -hmm. until they are now like a mother and son. Wow. And so she began to return to the lovely, vibrant woman that she once was, still missing her daughter, mm -hmm. but no longer like this, mm -hmm. choking. Yeah. Uh, the opposite of bloom, you know, right. literally <laughs> diminishing in who she was meant to be. Yeah, it, it, it's so true. And and that's a beautiful story because they ended up becoming so connected. But right. I think, too, it's important to remember what you said. Even if you're not besties with right. that person, right. and even if the relationship is never fully mended where you're hanging out with each other, it's still okay to walk around with forgiveness. Even if someone did you dirty, right. you can still forgive them right. and, 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 and be a better person for it. Well, and here's what I know about me. I need forgiveness every day. Mm -hmm. So who am I? to withhold from you the very thing I need on a daily basis, big or small. Mm -hmm. You know, so what, who died and put me in charge? You know, so I wanna give to you what I need and what I receive from God and from friends and not withhold that. But I think it's also critically important to practice forgiveness yeah. like anything else. And you can practice it in small ways, in traffic. You can practice forgiveness when someone messes up on you. Instead of getting angry back, wave a, hey, I, I understand, gotcha. Even if you they're know? waving at you with one finger. Exactly. <laughs> it's disarming. Right. And again, it's radical to respond with, it's okay. It's all right. I no one's it. expecting that. <laughs> that is true. That is and true. And also, model it for your kids. Yeah. That's how they learn to be people who can forgive when, they, when you are doing it with them. Well, I know why you have such a tremendous following, because you really break it down in a way that we can all understand. And I thank, thank you. you so much for joining us on Bloom today. Aww, you're so sweet. <laughs> thank Absolutely. you, Gail. And we're going to share this story with you on our website and stick around to find out why being open to change will help your personal growth. We'll be right back. Do you listen to the TV on high volume or have trouble hearing conversations? Then you would benefit from hearing aids. Don't waste thousands on expensive hearing aids when you can get Nano's revolutionary technology just $347. Don't be fooled by higher priced hearing aids. The CIC Recharge is a true hearing aid, not an amplifier. With rechargeable technology many customers say is superior to more expensive models. Call now and get not one, but two Nano hearing aids for just $347. Plus, we'll add a portable charging dock and ship your order absolutely free. 
The CIC Recharge has a tiny in-the-ear canal design that is nearly invisible. Why keep missing out on important conversations or waste thousands of dollars? Call and get two CIC Recharge hearing aids for only $347 and free shipping. Call now. 800-854-2435. Again, that's 800-854-2435. Welcome back to Bloom's Seven Ways to Becoming a Better Person edition. While it's easier to stick with what we know, embracing new experiences can really catapult your personal growth and allow you to become a better version of yourself. Joining us now is mental health educator, Natasha Pierre. Natasha, it's always so great to see you. Great to see you too. So this is interesting because yes. you and I were talking before this segment even started that we're both kind of creatures of habit. Absolutely. And we like things the way we like them. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, that's true. No change. So all the better to try to maybe get outside the box from time to time. Yes. And because we're creatures of habit, you know, we are accustomed to things being in certain ways. We want to be able to predict with reasonable certainty how life is going to be. And we like our ways, like I was mentioning. I am not a fan of when, you know, items are changed in my grocery store because my shopping list is according to the aisles in my grocery store. Weird? Yes, but it gives me that sense of control that, that I want and need. Yeah, and, and my true confession <laughs> is I wake up at the same time, I eat the same foods at the same times. I, do, I, I am a creature, creature of habit. That is why I'm excited that the Bloom team now has me out trying things that I would have never in a million years tried. They've got me out rock climbing. They've got me out jumping on trampolines. They've got me out doing things that take me out of our comfort zone. And that's just an example. When we yes. talk about changing and trying new things, it doesn't necessarily have to be an activity. Very true. Um, but the point of it is, is that you're doing something that breaks the norm. Why is that beneficial? It's important first because change is the only constant. That's the only thing that's always gonna be present in our lives. And the sooner we get comfortable with recognizing that change happens, the sooner that we can stop complaining about it, whining about it, and strategize on, okay, how am I gonna deal with this change? Whether it is I have a new hairstylist, or they change the, the condiments to the frozen section <laughs> aisle, whatever it is, the sooner we get okay with it, the more, you know, and faster we can move on with our lives. And I think that, you know, another big tip of yours is to go ahead and acknowledge the fear yes. that goes along with the change because that is natural. It doesn't have to paralyze you. Absolutely. There is fear. We fear the unknown. We fear how this new change is going to disrupt our peace, disrupt our lives, cause us money. And that's a very real fear. Now, when we confront it and we realize, OK, Natasha, just change your list. Just, you'll find a new hairstylist, ask for referrals. We can navigate our way through change if we just acknowledge that it's there and stop pretending not to notice. And when, when the change comes and it can bring some trauma with it, mm -hmm. whether it be the death of a loved one or you know, maybe an, a sudden illness, that you have to be able to look for support. 100%. I think the biggest lie that humans have internalized is that we've got to go at this life alone. We are not alone. There's absolutely no way for us to get through this life alone, and we need support. And sometimes that may be just a friend who's had the same experience. Of course, I'm a fan of therapy, it may be that. Or maybe you just need a great group of girlfriends who will make you forget about the change that has happened and make you laugh for a couple hours. But whatever it is, figure out what that is and go for it. And then knowing that, um, you know, the seasons of change, mm -hmm. because everything like you might be in a really terrible place. And yeah. I, I, I've been in that those places where I'm like, is this storm ever going to stop coming down on me? Like, I, I, I'm like, when is this ever going to end? Yeah. But it does end. Eventually does. you walk through the painful seasons. It does. You know, I shared with a friend this week that there are periods in my life where I felt like I went five rounds with Mayweather before yeah. I could take a break. Then came Tyson before I could get to my corner, then came Muhammad Ali. But the reality is, for me, remembering that I've survived 100% of my tough times helps me get through this one. So you know what? All right, Natasha, instead of doing it day by day, go hour by hour. You can get through the next hour. You mm -hmm. can get through the next day. Just focus on what you can handle in this moment instead of, you know, there's that 
how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Mm -hmm. If we look at the entire elephant, the entire change, it's overwhelming. But one bite at a time can really help us. Amen to that. All right, Natasha, it's yes. always such a pleasure to see you. And we should say, you know, if you really are struggling, Natasha does re recommend that you seek professional counseling. That's always a beautiful thing to do. And we're going to share this story on WFLA.com slash Bloom. And when we come back, becoming a better person starts with you. Stick around to find out the importance of self-compassion and how that skill will help you grow. Bloom will be right back. Welcome back to Bloom's Seven Ways to Become a Better Person edition. Creating time to focus on nurturing your own talents and skills can have a big impact on your life in many areas. Joining us now is business coach Pamela Pacheco. Welcome to Bloom, Pamela. It's so great to meet you. Thank you. So great to meet you, Gail. So I know that you help people in the business world, but a lot of that starts from who you are as an individual. And uh, you know, when you talk about identifying your strengths, what does that mean exactly? So I think it's important that no matter what type of industry you're in, what type of business realm, that you take time to reflect on what you're good at, what comes natural to you, what is something that someone woke you up in the middle of the night, you have no problem talking about, you have no problem knowing what you're good at because the faster you know what it is that you're good at, the faster you know what your strengths are, the more you're able to work on those strengths, the more you're able to nurture those skills and those talents. But you know, uh, for, for people out there, it, it could be either you're reinventing yourself later in life or maybe you're just starting out. Like I, I talked to my 23-year-old daughter, she's trying to find what, what she's passionate about, what she loves. So whatever stage you are at in life, how do you start that self-discovery of knowing what that makes you so passionate? I think it's important to not only reflect on what you're good at, mm -hmm. but also, like you said, see what you're passionate. What do you enjoy doing? What, do, what would you do if time or money were not an issue, if you had the complete freedom to do what you enjoy doing every single time? Because the more that you're able to know what that is, the more that you, are know, you know what you enjoy doing, the easier it's going to be what you what you're passionate about and to find what that is. And a lot of times it, it comes from you getting around those people that perhaps take those talents and bring those gifts out of you mm. because it's important to be around people that speak into you, that know what your gifts are because a lot of times our passions can change. Things that we enjoy doing can change, like you said, at different times in our life. And the more you're around people, it's like iron sharpens iron. Yes. And it's important for you to know, hey, what am I good at? And somebody will tell you like, listen, you're really good at this. Did you ever know that? And that happens to us ever so often. And it's important to be around those people that bring out the best in you and that see things in you and see things for you that sometimes you may not even see for yourself. Yeah, it's true, it's true. To have someone see you is so incredibly important. Um, then also you say setting goals can help you get to where you wanna be in life. So maybe you know that you're in a rut, that you know you're not living your best life and your passion in life. Maybe getting out of that is just to go ahead and start setting small goals. Yes, so I think that what happens is when we set goals, we all all the time focus on the long-term goals. What are those macro goals? What are the big goals? But take time to focus on micro goals. What are things that you can do immediately that you can do throughout time in the next two to three weeks that can affect the bigger goals, the macro goals? Because I always say, listen, uh, set goals in every area of your life, in your faith, in your fitness, in your family, in your fun, mm -hmm. in your fortune. But do things that in two to three weeks time period that you're doing it, you have developed new habits, you've set new goals. Those little goals will take care of the big goals if you do it ever so often and set some smart goals, whether that's you knowing what goals are specific, what goals are measurable, what goals are attainable, what goals are realistic, and set a time frame for when you want to achieve those goals. And, and know that change comes with a learning curve. You can't be afraid to learn new things. I mean, when I left the news industry and came to this, it might think, oh, it's just another TV job, but yeah. it's nothing different is the same. You know, it's like you have to learn along the way. Absolutely. You know, it's you're never too old or too young to reinvent yourself, but you have to be open to learning. We are not like trees that we're just told, hey, you <laughs> grow in this spot and you can only grow to one limit. No, like we are limitless beings like God give us God's gift to us is unlimited potential. And what we do with that is our gift back to him. But we have to be 
open to learning, open to learning new ideas, making new connections, because the more you learn new things, the better you'll be at those things that you thought you were already good at. And as you're learning new things and open to innovation and open to growth, you'll find probably something else that you're passionate about that you had no idea. Well, I can't tell you what a pleasure it is to meet you. I know you're new to Bloom, but I certainly hope you come back and visit us soon. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. And we're going to post Pamela's story on our website. And before we go to break, it is time for today's Bloom trivia question. What is the top reason knowing yourself better is important? You'll learn to accept who you are, increase confidence, or let go of self-doubt. We'll have the answer later on Bloom. Attention cancer victims who used the weed killer Roundup. A federal jury unanimously found that Monsanto's popular weed killer Roundup was a substantial factor in causing cancer. You may be entitled to substantial compensation. If you or someone you love used Roundup and were diagnosed with cancer, call the number on your screen now. Don't wait, there may be time deadlines to file a claim. Call 800-925-8035, that's 800-925-8035. Here's a great way to save money on your prescription medications. If you take Viagra or Cialis, we can give you a way to pay as little as $2 a pill. Compare that to prices as high as $60 per tablet. Call now with your prescription and pay as little as $2 a pill. We offer 24-7 service and always free delivery and confidential packaging. Call Pharmacy Shop 24-7 to get generic versions of Viagra or Cialis for as little as $2 a pill, plus free discreet shipping. Do you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS? Call the tax man. Ooh, call the tax man. Call the tax man. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS, call me right now. The IRS is the most relentless collection agency in America. They have the power to legally take everything you own, home, paycheck, autos, any asset you have. So what do you do? Call me now. My team of experts can help you keep your money. We have programs that can significantly reduce or eliminate what you owe, even payment plans that now stretch out for months. We can also stop collection calls, wage garnishments, and remove tax liens. So if you owe the IRS a lot of money and you want to keep it, don't wait. Call the tax man right now. It's time for today's Bloom Trivia question. What is the top reason knowing yourself better is important? You'll learn to accept who you are, increase confidence, or let go of self-doubt. The answer is you'll learn to accept who you are. Experts say knowing yourself better allows you to learn to accept who you are inside and out. An increase in confidence and letting go of self-doubt rounded out the top three according to Better Up. Well, thank you so much for tuning into Bloom today. Don't forget to follow Bloom on social media. We're on all major platforms and follow our Bloom bonus podcast that hit Apple's new and noteworthy. Listen to Bloom experts and extended conversations by searching my name on all podcast platforms. And we hope you'll tune in again on the next Bloom presented by Lifeguard Imaging. It's Infertility Awareness Week and infertility affects a staggering one in six people worldwide. We have top experts in with advice for your pregnancy journey and meet some of the top speakers coming to town for a major women's summit happening in Tampa Bay. And I found a place where you can find big savings on all of your groceries for grilling. So stay healthy everyone and I'll see you on the next Bloom. Call now 813-582-5222 to schedule your scan today.